kind of drum chops. What are they? I mean, I think they're like drum fills or something, but it's kind of vague. What's a drum chop? I have no idea. A fill or a groove that you're really proficient in, but it's something that everyone seems to argue about and no one can definitively come together with it, right? Obviously, so chopping drums is when you take them with it and you, you grab an axe and you, you, you hit them, hit the drums, you chop, chop, chop them, 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 chop, chop the chops, drum chops. Yeah, chops. What the heck are chops? Are they like fills? I don't know. Is that me? There's so many possibilities. Uh, today, we're going to talk all about the chops and learn why they're different than fills. And we're going to get to the bottom of it because it's really hard to answer. We're going to talk about that today on the drum department, which starts right now. Hey, fellas. Hey. How's it going? How you guys doing? Great. A okay. I love Excellent. this topic. I'm excited for you this. know what? I actually had to take Dave out of the video because he actually has a great answer for this. Yeah, so, sure he does. You're like, okay, we can't. Interview we can't you. use that. <laughs> I'll go last. Though. That's not good TV, Dave. I know it's not. Good not TV. good live yeah. stream. <laughs> Welcome everybody to this week's episode of the Drum Department. Yes, we're talking about chops. We talk about chops all the time, mm. but honestly. It's hard to define, it seems. Uh, so today we're going to go over this. We're going to play a couple of little games to see if we can actually get Ooh. to the, the the bottom of what a chop is That's what versus these are a for? fill or a groove. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to play some ping pong. Yeah, these paddles nice. are for, for real. Okay. Um, not just cool props and not just an easy way to get Zach Grooves involved today. <laughs> We actually have a reason for Zach Groves being involved today. I feel like so. me and Zach are going to fight. Well, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Is there a reason why he's called Zach Groves and not Zach Chops? Zach Chops. Zach oh. Chops. It's an Come irony. On. It's, we maybe we have this. to lobby for that to get changed today. <laughs> maybe. Uh, and before we get started, I just want to say I'm going to apologize in advance if I start sneezing. Uh -oh. The uh, summer, spring weather has certainly <laughs> kicked me a little bit today, and I'm having a bit of a challenge, so hmm. I'll do my best. So we'll see how we Just do. pop a bunch of Claritin. Yeah. Yeah, I should have. But then I get really loopy. More loopy than normal. <laughs> That's okay. No good. Some sneezing that, that chops. Kind of sneezing chops. <laughs> uh, so are we, the, are we the paddle? Are we here to dictate? The panel paddle? The paddle, not panel. Are we the paddle we here? We can decide so, what yeah. chops are. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, and for those of you that maybe aren't familiar with all of our pat our paddlists today, mm. we have Brandon over here. On uh, my resident left, choppist. your right, if you will. Yes, our resident choppist. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, actually, you're a, you're a resident I've gone fillist. Through one day. Oh, fillist. You're our Sorry. fillist. Yeah. So Sorry. We got Brandon. We got Dave, of course. Yes. Hello. Brandon's wow. our resident, or Dave's our, our resident Dave. Groovist. Oh, Dave. Yeah. yeah. And of course, we have Dylan. Hey. Woo! Dylan, Woo! Dylan's been known to go both ways. <laughs> Fills, chops. <laughs> Just easy, just, easy with that. Just so. going to let that hang in the air a little bit. <laughs> okay, he's so. the best looking guy on the panel. Abs no question. No question. I'll take that. That's why I showed up today. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, thank you, you for, for improving the appearance of the show. I needed that confidence. <laughs> we need that. It's the boots. Okay, so uh, to start with this, we got to figure out what chops are. So I looked up the definition of chops. There is actually a definition. So, <clears throat> Like Webster's Dictionary? The definition and origin of chops. The use of chops in this context begins, life is a word meaning the jaws, the mouth, or the lips, and is first recorded in 1577. It was and remains standard English, but it currently tends to be found in such slang phrases as to bust someone's chops, to nag, to flap one's chops, to chatter. In the 1940s, uh, though it was probably used some years before this, chops became the meaning of one's ability, skill, or competence, as was a jazz musician's figurative reference to one's embouchure. Their chops, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so that is sort of where it all started. And then, of course, the better one was, the better one's chops were. Right? Hmm. So that's where chops started. Uh, so modern vernacular, short story, a version of that is, in the 40s, they talked about horn players, sax players, that they had good chops because they could play all the really cool things because they had the right, the right ability to do so. And I would say in the drum world, it transfers virtually the same thing and just replace face for hands and feet. Yes? Right. Hmm. I could say so. Yeah. yeah, facility is chops, yeah? Yeah. That's yeah. a very, very broad way to start the idea on what a chop is. Okay, so before we go any deeper, Drumio has a definition already of chops. On our dictionary of terms? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Circa and, 20, and, 2008. Yeah, so yeah, like any other research topic, it's possible that it's changed over time, you know? Like with dinosaurs, what we thought were dinosaurs back like 25 years ago, we realized, no, we had that wrong. It's actually this now. At least I think that's what's mm. happening. Great I'm not totally sure. Thank you. Um, but so this is what we are still saying is, it's still, I found it on a current document. So okay. uh, it says, drum chops are musical phrases played around the kit that can be flashy bursts of notes, often linear patterns, or simple melodic phrases. They can be slow or fast. You can practice them by yourself or play them along with a tune in any musical style. Learning drum chops can help you to be free on the kit and express yourself, and it also is an awesome way to work on your listening skills. Hmm. That, I'm sorry, I'm gonna that? call us out Interesting. on that. Interesting. That says nothing. <laughs> no, that's, hmm. yeah, that's, I mean, like the first the, line was the most accurate. Yes. Musical phrase played around yes. the kit. Yes, yeah. But that's I mean, the only thing. just left yeah, it that there. that could be anything, though. That was the only part <laughs> that actually said it, it was something. Where, yeah. where, did, where did you find that? <laughs> This is breaking news. <laughs> this is drumyo.com. Calls ourselves out. Chops. chops. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, Dave's right. That's actually where I grabbed that from. Yeah. Uh, so maybe we're going to learn today what we're going to add to this. Well, here's the question. Like, um, the, the term chops has been like, uh, what's like a keyword for drummers? It's a buzzword. You know? It's like a buzzword. That's mm. what, I'm, th- what yeah, I'm, I, I'm trying to get. I think at. one challenge, sorry to interrupt, Dave, we don't even all agree internally. Absolutely. On marketing, we've been doing this huge chops push, oh. defining it as something totally different. Jared has a totally different definition mm. of what he thinks chops are and we're not even aligned. Well, should we start there? Sure. So Jared's wrong? Is that where we're starting? Yes. I think okay. that's the hot take. That's the hot Always take. blame. <laughs> what I'm I, I want to hear Dylan's definition. Then. Always blame the guy that's not in the room. Yes. No, Dylan, please. What's, what's our marketing take on it? <laughs> We've been taking a hard line that chops are more that like tasty linear playing that has just like exploded over the last 20 mm-hmm. years. And now with social media, you hear some players that just pull out these licks with like, between kick, snare, and hat, and like, you know, Nate Smith, Zach Grooves, oh, this goes on, Tony Royster, Aaron Spears, Eric Moore, like when they decide to explode creatively, it's mm. like these rapid rudimental patterns that just like, you can't figure out what's even going on. It's like they're flowing around the kit. So that's the line we've taken. Hey, Jared, if you're out there, he's probably sitting at Soundcheck right now. In fact, mm. they might be rehearsing right now. He's out, he's in Winnipeg. That's right. And uh, so if you're on your phone, which he usually is, let us know what you think a chop is and tell us how it differs from what Dylan just said, because I like what he just said. Mm-hmm. Yeah, have... Jared feels like playing anything at a high level. We've talked about this, so I can speak for him. But like, if you do a wicked fast sing- singles around the drums, that's, that, yeah. you don't, nor that's not going to be considered a chop next to somebody doing some cool hand and foot thing. I, okay. I think since since like social media and like v- like drum videos have been a thing, I think drummers have gravitated to like those types of things, and we've almost just called those chops. But I I would also lean towards agreeing with Jared, where like you can have <laughs> chops that aren't like linear or rudimental or anything like that. But I feel like in general, like the public has leaned that way. Where they hear a Tony Royster or yep. a Thomas Pridgen and like that's where we are the boxes. That's where we are now. It's basically yeah. like gospel chops slowly just became chops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So when you put a definition around it like that, then it's subjective. And then it's like, where's the line? Like you said, singles very fast around the kit. Like, is there a per- level of proficiency that goes into it? Maybe that is the case. Like, so to me, um, the way I've always felt chops, because I used to write articles on chops versus fills way back in the day. It's, like, it's the same kind of thing. Wall Street. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> he, Wall Street Journal. Wall Dave, Street. Dave was still writing it. Dave yeah. was still writing about big bands and the trumpet players. <laughs> well, when you when you read that def- definition, I'm like, oh crap, is that one that I may have written? No. But but I mean, so it's gone back and forth, and the way I've kind of seen it evolve is, you know, a fill is like a specific piece of vocabulary. It's usually a transition piece from one part to another. It's meant to build tension, release tension. You know, it's got a purpose, right? It's almost like a noun. Where I see chops is more as like an adjective. Like, how does that drummer play it? It's like having a toolbox of skills or of patterns that you can riff on at any time. You can pull it out. You know exactly when the chop starts, when it ends. You can put it in a groove setting. You can put it in a fill setting. You can put it in any kind of setting. But it's something you have so well versed that the orchestration doesn't matter. The dynamic level doesn't matter. You can pull things in here and there, but you've got that pattern nailed. And you'll see that with drummers like Steve Gadd has a bunch of chops that 
you'll hear them come out. And when you when he plays them in like a festival, everyone claps. Like that's his chop, right? Um, or but then a fill <laughs> that's that his chop. Or a drum I, I riff. Say, Sorry. Or, or that's the... just, it's, <laughs> but hey, know, there's his chop. When you hear him do, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. or 50 ways to leave your no. lover. Everyone's like, that's Steve's chop. That's one of his chops. I feel okay. like those are licks. Here we go. Short, we're not talking. Fight. We're not oh, bringing licks in. The chop, it becomes a lick. It's not, a fill. We're not it's bringing a, a, three, a three-sided thing. We don't have licks on here. Yeah. I, you know, no. a lick. Okay, I think about like guitars too. We we just did the Guitario method, and Ayla did a whole chapter on riffs. And I'm like, Ayla, why are you doing like? I mean, there's so many things like you can learn on the guitar. Like, why riffs? And she's like, Well, you get these riffs down, and you can apply them all over the neck. And so I'm like, That's like a guitar chop, right? So licks, chops, riffs. I mean, I'm not going to get into riffs. We'll talk. That's kind of are, but they kind of are all. It's almost like an adjective explaining how that I'm, person. I'm curious, is Dylan. What you were saying? Did you say Jared's opinion is that it has to be executed at a high level? He, he feels generally anything you play at a high level is like your chops. So I think it goes back to more the early definition, Kyle's. Like you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chop. Because I you can probably say this, yeah. but I agree with Jared. What? I think, I think you that's not? that's the simple enough he answer. Needs to be here for this, uh, and to me. I'm not going to add anything much further here because we've really already, A, covered most of the likely choices and also confused everybody, which is fine. Uh, That's why we're here. For me, it's about context and musical reasoning for what's happening. So a fill, like you said, a fill is is usually a, a... It's like it's a utilitarian thing. It shouldn't be considered that way because you can play a really cool drum fill. Mm -hmm. But... When it comes to chops, it's it's having the the musicality, the musicianship to take an idea and run with it rhythmically. It could be part of the groove. It could be part of the fill. <clears throat> it's the it's the choices you're making, which does kind of come back to that initial statement yeah. of having that proficiency, which does also tie into what Jared said. Um, but in today's sort of climate, I think it is very much considered. How do I learn what a chop? I want to learn to play chops. Right? And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, the argument back to that is, though, like you said about Ayla learning a riff and being able to move it around. It's like learning a language and you're learning all the parts of the language instead of someone just saying, say this word now, mm. mm -hmm. which is what we do with fills a lot of times. Like a student will play a fill, but they don't know what else they can do with it. It becomes a chop to them when they go, hey, I can move that this way or I can start it on the two or the one. Suddenly now it's a new vocabulary piece. That's what's creating their chops. Yeah, but you're so proficient with it. You're so proficient with it. Like, I'll be walking down the street, and I have a couple of, I guess I'd call them, patterns that I know so well that I'm literally doing them in my head, and I'm listening to songs, I'm putting them into places. When I go to the kit, I can just play that pattern yeah. at any tempo, you know, almost at any dynamic level, because I practice it so much that, you know, whereas a fill, it's like, I'm, I'm doing it for the song, or I'm doing it because this is what needs to be, or a transition piece in there, I might improvise, improvise something, you know. Um, a chop is, you can definitely improvise a chop, but you're not improvising the pattern so much. It's like the orchestration and the... Mm. And I also want to say this, like, it's only a select group of nerds on the drums that will go <laughs> this deep into uh, this topic. Terminology. Terminology of <laughs> riffs versus chops licks versus and... licks versus... I love all the, the chats, too. There's uh, lots of opinions and no uh, thoughts. <laughs> Weird. It's great. <laughs> and, and, and that's it, too. Because the one thing I want to say, just to kind of cap off this part of this, is you don't you, you don't have to be a professional drummer to have chops. You don't have to be uh, a, an advanced drummer to have chops. You can be a beginner and learn. You can go down your chop uh, uh, path. You can where, learn your chop Where journey. can you learn chops oh, if you're a it's beginner? It's funny you should ask that. Uh, well, we do happen to be running uh, a program coming up very soon. It's a cohort with this man right here, Zach Chops. We're going to call him Zach Chops for a month. <laughs> At least for a month. Can we, can we hashtag that or create that some sort of mm. a movement? We're just going to start another Zach channel. Chops. Yeah. Yeah, it's a new channel. New YouTube channel. channel. Uh, yeah, we're doing something called 30 Day Chops, which means you can learn chops in 30 days. Mm -hmm. And it's designed to help you learn how to play chops. We've come up with this really cool way of doing it. Starts June 5th. You can register it for it now. Uh, what's the way to register for that? Do you know? Go to drumeo.com slash 30 Day Chops. There it is. And the tagline uh, is even more ambiguous. You will learn tasty linear licks in 30 days. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so, so you play along with Zach. He's going to show you some of those like linear hand foot patterns. You just play along with them. You slowly speed them up, and they're really cool. They're tasty. Yeah, <laughs> real tasty. That's what he said. I know. You agree? I I agree. Uh, fully. Now 
we're going to get into a bit of that. I'm actually going to learn one of them live later. Mm. But before we get to that, I've got a game I want to play with you guys. That's why you guys all have your paddles. All right. Okay. So we've discussed what we think chops are. You guys out there have discussed what you think chops are. We want you guys to take part in this too. So we're going to play. I've got four clips prepared. We're going to do them one at a time. We're going to watch a clip, and we have to vote whether we think what we saw was a fill or a chop, and then quickly discuss why we chose that. Oh, wow. I'm curious to see if we all choose the same thing. I'm expecting one of us to always be contrarian, Dave. But uh, let's see Classic. what happens. Uh, so, Chris, if you could please run that first clip. Okay, three, two, one, vote, everybody. Three, two, one, go. Okay, Phil, Phil. Mm. We all agree it's oh, Phil. Interesting. Okay. Dr. Phil all around. We can get along. I, I'm surprised by that a little bit, and I chose that clip expecting, hopefully, Phil would be the choice. That's what made the most sense to me. The reason I thought it was a Phil was because it was part and parcel of what the song is doing. Mm. It, it's, it's He wrote that, it's composition. And I mean, it's not, it's even not even a fill. Of these two choices though, it's a fill. I would say it's an orchestrated part, for sure. Would you say it's a melodic pattern orchestrated on the drums? <laughs> Is it a piece yes, of vocabulary? Yeah. Played at a high yeah. level of proficiency? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Dylan, why is that a fill? Um, I agree, I actually would call it a groove because it's like the foundation of the song. But it's more so a fill because he's like, he does use it as a transition to the other right. sections. That's his mm -hmm. like 20 minute song, I believe, right? Play, yeah. Dave Grohl. I call that a fill just because he's transitioning. Yeah, okay. Dave? I, I call it a fill because I've seen Dave Grohl play a lot of different chops and that's not one of them in his pocket. Okay. Um, it's also just a three note grouping. It's nothing special. It's like a basic rudiment. Ooh. And oh, hot take, oh, hot oh, take. Hey, you say Come you on, it's is opening it? hi-hats. Phil, <laughs> Phil Collins, Neil Parrott, Dave Grohl. Phil Collins, Neil Parrott, Dave Grohl. All Matt, am I that, that Jake? Lick, all the time. Is it that hard to impress me it, these days? No is this the name rivalry? Right, You're just, just jealous? 200 <laughs> million albums right there. <laughs> Hey, I'm not saying it was it was a bad. You it was amazing. It, it was Dave. It was amazing. I'm just trying to give you a hot take. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, Good so job. That's my that's my take on it. Wow. Brandon, I I agree with Dylan. I think it's a fill just because it's orchestrated as a transition in that section. Okay. All right. Kyle, what's your I, rationale? I, I said I think it's a what's that? Your rationale? Uh, it was fill. Okay. But but orchestrated and because it's it's sort of supporting the song. It's not a groove in that sense because it goes into a groove. Mm. There's a clear groove that is established. Yeah, the Tom it. part. Yeah, exactly. Get Dylan. All right. What did you guys out there Trust think? Me. Let us know in the chat. I'm curious <laughs> to see what everybody else thinks. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to a quick look here. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. okay right. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, 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 yeah. Chops. Yeah, pretty but a good chop can right. fill. Yeah, we've established that. Keep playing it. All right. Okay. Uh, let's do the next one. Let's do the next one. Uh, Chris, are you ready? The next video, please. All right, these are ready to vote. Clips. Three, two, one, go. I mean, we're not. Yeah. Whoa, we okay. are aligned here. Okay. I mean, this is an <laughs> obvious one. It's, <laughs> it's his chop. We even talked about oh, it before. Dave. There it is. <laughs> you complain all the time about what we say to make sure we don't offend any artists that there's. Steve Gadd's watching this, going, "I've got at least three. What are you saying?" He's for sure watching. I never yeah. said yeah. three. <laughs> I just said that's one of his. <laughs> you said his chop. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah, it's so definitely chop. chop. Do we? Yeah. Yeah. So that was I, it, I pulled that clip primarily because it it literally demonstrates the birth of chop, if you will. Mm. It shows a rudiment, it's Radha McHugh, mm. right? He starts voicing it around the drum kit, and then he starts improvising using uh, bass drum, adding bass drum to it, and doing different things with it. And how do we put that in context with him soloing with it, which he does all the time? Yeah. That's a classic. Steve Gadd lick, if you will. Mm. But but it's a chop he uses because he'll use that phrasing all over the drum set. Yeah. Right? So that was, I I tried to pull one that was relatively simple, I thought. So uh, we all agree? Anything, yes. anything, else, anything else to add to that one? O only thing is you did instinctively just call it a lick. 
Yes. I think if it's a short enough chop, it's kind of a lick. <laughs> are, are we saying? Categorizing Jeez. chops it's in like, length now. It's like two, yeah. two beats or less. Yeah. It's lick territory. Well, okay, hang on then a second. Then it's phrase territory Licks over three okay, beats. Okay, hang on. I'm, this is where we put a little asterisk <laughs> and, a, and, and a bottom part on the, on the thing. So if you are a brass player, and you were talking about their chops, you're talking about the overall sound, their, their options of what they can play. Now they might play a cool lick in their chops. Hmm. That's a thing. Because um, it could be a really cool, eh? like we all know what the lick is, right? If you guys don't know what the lick is, look it up. <laughs> right? And it's in a million billion things. And, but that's an example of that. You could have great chops, but you could also play that lick. Mm. So Gino and Dan on the chat said, a chop to me is you trying to make your drum talk while playing. That's good. I like that. I like that. that. Yeah. Mm. That's really good. Good definition, Gina. Should add that to Come you. on down yeah. to drumming talk. Well, that's what we've been saying is it's like people really proficient with chops, it's they're just thinking in rights and lefts. They're just like speaking <laughs> on the drums, right? Mm. <laughs> King J O says, totally agree, talking about girth. What? <laughs> <laughs> What is he talking about? I don't know. Oh, maybe, a, maybe a wide chop. I don't know. All right, let's do it. leave a, it there. Yeah, yeah let's leave it there and move on to the next one. On part. that note, let's move on to the next possible fill or chop. Okay, what part? What part? Okay, yeah. I know. I was just gonna yeah. say. Now there, we could discuss several parts of that <laughs> because that is, to me, beautifully orchestrated. Mm. Everything she plays is so beautifully orchestrated. That last thing that happens in the video, I did not use any other descriptor because I will get in trouble if I do. The last <laughs> four seconds of that video is what we're talking about right this moment. Oh, okay. can I listen to it again? No. Okay. Dave. I just like. Okay, I just like uh, Annika's playing. <laughs> All right, Kate. so uh, you're going to answer definitively on that last piece. So I, I ran more of the clip to give context to that portion of the video. This right? is going to be controversial. It will be. <laughs> All right, uh, voting. Three, two, one, and go. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Oh, here we go. 50-50. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so Brandon, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss ours next. I want to hear okay. how you guys thought that that was a chop. Oh, okay, sure. Especially um, after the previous answer from right? now, the, the simple answer would be Phil. The more evolved answer is chop, <laughs> and I'll explain <laughs> naturally. The the higher thinking. <laughs> so yes, in function, that chop is being used as a fill. But the orchestration, the melodic choices she's making there, are beautiful, and they're really clever. It's very complex, what's happening. A lot of notes in that space, but it creates great motion through that particular thing. So that is a chop to me. Yes, it's being used as a fill. That's a chop wearing a, a fill hat, if you will. I love being on Kyle's team. Yeah. Very articulate. Thank you. Okay, fill guys, talk me uh, out of it. The only thing I'll add is I feel like there was like, like even the, um, the groove she played before, I know we're not looking at it specifically, but uh, it's like this chopped up, like she's like playing mm. the hand and foot kind of like super That's linear. Yeah, it's like a I had my a paddle, I had my groove paddle turned around for the groove. Yeah. Groove I bet you she wrote that song <laughs> for groove the groove. No. Um, she probably practiced that. Oh, a million percent. Yeah. Did you yeah. change your? No, no, no. This is for the beat. The beat that was but okay. that was a chop. The reason why I call that last part of fill is because it wasn't anything uniquely distinct about it. It was around the toms to the end. When you're talking about like a single stroke, you say, well, hey, that's not really, but well, that's kind of what it was there. Um, and I would imagine that she probably plays that little bit. Wow. foot stuff going on. See, I think, I think yeah. I, I chose Phil. It was Phil, tasty. I chose Phil because of the context of it. It was the transition. Oh, we might have, we might have a But okay. I agree with Kyle. Oh, here we go. When, oh, we flipped him. But yeah, no, no, no I still, think your paddle should have said Phil based on your answer. <sighs> yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. Because the utility was a fill, but I agree, like there were like <laughs> chop elements in oh, what you played. This. this is gonna be a 9,000 hour episode. I love it. Mm, Chuck so L says Phil for sure. Christian T says, uh, oh, like your thought, Phil for sure. Not Megan says Dylan is correct. Um, I love yeah, this. Thank it's you. Split <laughs> there too. And there's no, there's no right or wrong, there's just better answers. <laughs> 
But no, I mean, I, how often? <laughs> so it's like when you hear um, Anna can play Hawthorne, is she busting that lick out? That particular lick? Yeah. Probably that one time. Yeah, I don't think she would ever play that exactly Agreed. the same. So there you go. <laughs> If it was a chop, she'd be putting that stuff everywhere. No way, man. Just orchestrating. Like, like a like chop the, doesn't have to be one thing. Yeah, I feel like the length of one. it is a factor. Absolutely. She's doing it over turn. like Agreed. over one bar. It's yep. like five or six beats. Yep. That wasn't Pretty five true. or six beats, was oh, it? Oh, my word. I think word. she filled over the bar. This is great. Yeah. Well, we'll have to agree to disagree. <laughs> We're split. Can, Can we, we split? agree that that's a badass groove in Phil, though? Yeah, it was unreal. The whole clip was amazing. I feel good about the company I'm in. <laughs> knowing knowing glance coming your way mm. um all right we got one last one that right. i have to say i think that one we just did was probably the most questionable i mm. think this next one uh, i don't know dave's gonna be a stick in the mud on this one too uh let's see that last one This one's so easy. See, this one's so easy. I thought it was. Now I'm not sure. Oh right. man, always go with your first gut answer. Okay. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, and vote. I'm going in the middle. What? Oh, Kyle. Kyle. No way. <laughs> Kyle. Come it has, on. It has Papa. to be that one. Yeah, it's a chop. It has to be that one. Yeah, we don't even need to explain why. It's so okay, then self evident. Let's not explain it then. Maybe a little. Let's unpack it a bit. It's, <laughs> it's a chop because he's he's literally demonstrating this cool hand and foot thing, and then he's just showing you a, a bunch of different applications yes. of mm. this one chop. Right. Yeah, and it's executed yeah. at a high level. It certainly is. <laughs> yeah, he and shows was, it as a fill. Sorry, he shows it as a fill. No. He does. Yes, he does. I was in the lesson. In con no, no, I'm he, told there, me. he does show it as a fill in that. <laughs> he said, this is a chop, Dave, right before he did it. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, he, you know, he, he's orchestrating it around. He's showing how he, he's even frozen in, <laughs> like... Three years later, you will funny. be on this episode. <laughs> I'd also like to point out, I don't think Dave was actually in the room when they were doing that. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was hosting. I was actually the host on that one. <laughs> what do you think Larnell would say? Bring him out, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Larnell will be like, why are you guys discussing this? You're ruining <laughs> music. Don't use my name. <laughs> Don't say my name on your show. <laughs> yeah, that's a chop for sure, and it's a it's a it's like a textbook example. Kind of like the Steve Gadd one, but I think it just it goes farther with where, where you could demonstrate it very quickly what it can do. So mm -hmm. I thought that was super cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. That was great. Mm, good um, game. I, as, as most of these discussions go, always hot debate topic. Mm. There's no right or wrong answer. But I think every time we do something like this, the group of us, the folks out there in the world, I honestly think we all learn something. And we might get a little bit closer to helping everybody understand why we use these terms and how to use them better and, and how that can affect ultimately your drumming and all those things. Well, yeah. being like, Fully transparent, one challenge when we were launching 30 Day Chops was defining chops. Right. Like, how do you launch a course for to teach something that nobody can really agree on mm. what it is? So we went, we had these discussions to try yeah. and unpack, okay, if we're going to tell people we're going to teach them chops, what are we actually promising? Mm -hmm. So I was stoked when Kyle said he had this show plan. Yeah. That's great. Okay, so speaking of 30 Day Chops, perfect segue, thank you for that. Uh, so we're, I'm actually going to work through one of the examples from 30 Day Chops Ooh. for you guys to see. Because we haven't really shown anybody what 30 Day Chops is. So to quickly explain it, it's 30 days of you learning how to play these new ideas. Mm -hmm. Every day you get a 10 minute workout. Okay. So what we've done, uh, we're gonna, not going to do a whole 10 minute workout right now. What I've done is I've grabbed basically three small portions of one of the days in the middle. And I'm nice. putting myself on the spot. <laughs> and I'm going to learn from Zach Grooves. This is day 11, if you want to know, if you want to know roughly where this falls. Uh, but this is kind of what you're going to be able to learn. And you'll see the progression. This is basically what's happening throughout that workout on day 11. Did you want to add anything? I see you uh, looking at me. Only thing I would add, just in case you guys aren't familiar with Zach, uh, he's got a great YouTube channel. We chose him to teach this course because he puts up random videos and his chops are insane. I know yeah. the irony, his name is Zach Grooves, but he applies these linear patterns and they're just phenomenal. So he worked with the team to write these exact right. chops for the course. So you're 
learning his exact licks. Yeah, so what we're gonna yeah. do is you're gonna see his no video. Fills. No fills. Only chops. No fills, <laughs> just chops. You're gonna see the video, and I'm gonna be in the little corner there. I'm gonna try and, and hack myself through this. Uh, this is three abridged versions of the workouts of day 11. And you so. haven't seen this? You haven't done this one yet? I have not yet? done it yet. No. Okay. Live in real time. I know, time. I know what's in it, basically, but I have not done it. Now, are you, do you have a lot of, like, are you a chop guy when you play? Like, I have some. Yeah. Uh, they're usually very well protected. They only come out in extreme emergencies. <laughs> um, You're supposed to feed them. If they want, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've had, I've had, Living I've, beings. I've had a little bit of trouble with the chops every now and then, so I try to keep them very responsible. Hmm. <laughs> All right, let's see it. Love it. Here we go. Let's go. Okay. All right, today's a little tricky. We're adding accents on places where they really shouldn't be. But it still sounds cool and it's gonna expand your knowledge, all right? Here we go. Remember, remember what I told you about those ghost notes? Keep them nice and low and clean and consistent. You got this. up some hi-hat. See? Cool stuff. You got this. Come on. Go. Now what? You got this, Kyle. Oh, the ride symbol. Okay. Ah, now we're adding some double kick drum stuff. Stumbling is that he puts the bass drum on the end. For whatever reason, I have to play it on the. But I love that. That's now. So what we did there is that's a ten-minute workout, so it goes much longer in each section. So I just put three together to learn it all. But that's super duper cool. Clearly based in paradiddle. Yeah, so basically every week is almost like a different rudiment focus. Okay. So there's a whole week just on paradiddles, whole week on doubles, oh, combining. Cool. And even just like the little stuff you're doing with the like doubles on the hi-hat. Yeah, yeah. Those little inflections that you hear a lot of these drummers do, like Zach, it's it's just like those small things that just like grab your attention. Yeah, because the, the first one is kind of basically it's it's working with the inverted paradiddle. Yeah. when you cycle the two bars. But then the second one, now I skipped ahead. There's actually a couple in between each of those, right? So, but the next one where there's that open hi-hat on the uh, for e and, it's kind right. of in a weird spot, right? That's super cool. And that's a great uh, technical exercise. It's a great 
uh, independence exercise, and at that tempo, mm. it gets. I know that there's work throughout this that gets more more complex yeah. and faster. But you have to start at that speed. And I love working through things like this methodically because you're working on all these moves. Like you saw a couple times I'd miss a bass or whatever, but it's like it's just it's just giving you that repetition to write it into your brain. Okay, do it Zach's way. I have a way I would do it. Fine, but that's not what I'm practicing right now. I need to do what Zach's doing. Right, and mm. then it's giving me a new idea. I'm like, oh, if I did this, I might do this. Yeah. Right, so I'm getting all these new ideas just by practicing. And how about you do that for ten minutes too, playing it super clean? Right, that's you don't normally practice that stuff. If you practice that at home, you're like, you know, and you're like, well, that's fine. And you do it twice, you're like, oh, I got it. I'm yeah, good. but you don't yeah. really know what it can do, mm -hmm. right? And so, like, I could take just those ideas and just play a million things around the drums mm -hmm. just with that, you know. Um... Just taking little excerpts of those things. Yeah. Right? That's why I'm glad you just sped it up right there, because. That was the big challenge for anyone watching. Uh, when you're doing it slow, it doesn't sound like right. mm -hmm. Annika's or Larnell's blistering chops, but those are the same phrases That's they're the stuff. using. Exactly. Yeah. And it's worth it to spend the time doing mm -hmm. it slowly and just get the spacing of the notes. The ghost notes are so sensitive. And then after 30 days, you speed that up and you're going to be able to play a lot mm -hmm. of those same Well, the cool thing chops. too is with uh, all the workouts, there's music created for it. You don't need the paddle anymore. <laughs> <laughs> It's a chop. You it's know what? Off, you can hang out it if you want to. <laughs> I can what? You can keep it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you get music to actually practice along to it, with, which is nice because a lot of times when you're trying to force a chop into mm -hmm. somewhere, or even a fill, whatever totally. you want to call it, it's, it's sometimes hard. Um, so, Kyle, do you think you know that chop? You did what? Four minutes of practice? Uh, yeah, I have most of it in my head now. And I can tell you, like I say, I have enough facility in the instrument to tell you where the mental block is, mm -hmm. right? I know on beat three, I keep moving that bass drum and then I just get sidetracked because of it. I can play it, it's just not my go-to, so I have to rewrite that. But yeah, I have, like if you ask me right now, uh, the first one I did was... Ah. Sorry. Right? And then the second one was... And the third one. Right? That's just the first bar of each one, but I, I memorized that just now, mm -hmm. right? It's it's in there, and now I can keep going. If I did that for 10 minutes, I'd have it. Yeah, for sure. It's very cool. And I think that that particular day, that's day 11, like I was saying, I think there's five patterns. So I, we just showed three either. There's one more after that. And they just, each, each section they add, like, you'll notice, like, because the first thing we did there, we had that. Two eighth notes on four. And then they added the um, open hi-hat. In between that, they're just adding the extra inverted paradiddle yep. in there. So Super cool. Just keeps adding an element each time. Yeah. And I believe every workout has, there's about five different examples. And there's some that appear from day to day. And then you just add one or two each day. So yeah. it's not just like a whole new palette of stuff every single day. It's builds incrementally. And if you did that every day for a month, my goodness, you're gonna have that stuff so ingrained in your subconscious, that's where chops come from. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. have to be in your back pocket for you to play them whenever you want. You can't be thinking about, oh, I'm gonna play example number seven from day number 12. Well, I heard um, yeah, good uh, point. Steve Gadd went through Zach's 30-day chops. That's how he got his sure did. chops. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I've only got a couple of chops. Dave was telling me I need to do a few more. <laughs> oh, come on, Steve. <laughs> I, uh, so bored I love home. you, buddy. Speaking of Dave Atkinson, it's time to do Blast Beats, everybody. Ooh. Am I doing it this week? You're doing it. All right. All right. All right. So I'm just going to take out my in ears. Dave, take out your in ears because we're just going to go ahead and do this. All right. Uh, Chris, what we're going to do, bring up the uh, clock when you get a chance there. And um, I'm not going to count down. Dave got mad at me the other day because, and he was right. Justifiably, you were right. Get mad? You were cross. I wasn't cross or disappointed. Disappointed, perhaps. Um, he said, you know, you got to give folks a better chance to complete all the questions in that minute. You count down the clock and it starts and then they're already off to the races. Why don't you do what most game shows do and just let the clock start after the first question gets asked? So okay. I'm like, sure, we'll do that. So of course, as is tradition, someone on YouTube's gonna win a prize if Dave answers all 20 mm. of these questions in 60 seconds. What will they win, Kyle? Uh, today they're gonna win. You know what? 
Let's give away a membership to the 30 Day Chops cohort. Oh, we can't do that. We're gonna do it. No, that's just, way too much. No just said we're gonna way. Do it. Really? <laughs> All right, let's yeah. go. What's the value of that, uh, Dylan? I'm not even sure. $97, comes Ooh. with free drumsticks. Oh, there you go. Wow. So, someone out there on YouTube, if you want Huge. to learn your chops, you're going to get a chance. If Dave, I ask, if I answer all these questions. That's, oh, so you're feeling like pressure's on, Dave. Dave. Or he doesn't look terribly concerned. No. <laughs> I think he should be though. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Nylon or wood tip drumsticks, Dave? Wood. Favorite place on the planet, Dave? Why? Uh, heel up or heel down? Heel up. What are you listening to right now? Uh, Reliant K. Hmm. Coated or clear drum heads? Uh, clear. Artist you really want to work with? Uh, Vinny. Symbols clean or dirty? Uh, clean. Golfing or tennis? Golfing. Pedals, chain, strap, chain. or direct drive? 100% chain. TV or movies? Uh, TV these days. How many snare drums is too many? Uh, 25. Square root of nine? Three. Oh, single or double pedal? Double pedal. Flying or driving? Uh, flying. Are concert toms still cool? They never were. <laughs> suit or t-shirt? <laughs> uh, suit. Lacquer or wrapped drums? Uh, lacquer. Steak or seafood? Steak. LPs or streaming? Streaming. And the last question, best video game console of all time? Oh, it's gotta be the Super Nintendo. <laughs> That's an easy Six one. Six seconds to spend. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That was too easy. That was too easy. I didn't even think about the question. Some of them I probably might not have answered correctly, but. Uh. <laughs> well, that's the whole idea. You're not supposed to answer them just correctly. Just answer them. Yeah, you fair did, enough. You nailed it. There we go. And Perfect. for those of you wondering why I asked them about video games, you collect video games. Yeah, I'm a and little bit of a retro nerd. Parfanalia? Mm. Parfanalia. Yeah. Yeah. But that was my era. You know, everyone has that console that they grew up with. Yeah. Like the formative years were spent on that console. So oh, man, I know. It's just crazy, crazy yeah. isn't it? Paper, All right. Paperboy? No, Paperboy is the... Uh, oh, yeah, pick that was a winner ass. now. That was Let's okay. see. Dave, uh, you may as well help me pick a winner, Dave. Okay. Uh, give me a number between 1 and 30, because, you know, chop. 29. 29. Okay, okay, okay. Easiest. Easiest answer is 29. All right. Our winner is <clears throat> Slappy Crooks. Slappy nice. Crooks, Slappy Crooks. Email oh, me at krad at drumio.com with your, with your info. We will get you set up as a member of 30 Day Chops. Congrats. Very exciting. Yeah, oh good. my goodness, that was so good. Dave, you killed that. Thank I'm you. I'm a little bit of extra. Except for that concert Tom answer. That was, yeah. <laughs> it was frustrating. You know, it's funny because we talked about that last week. It's like no one says that they're bad. Everyone likes them. Yeah. So I had to be the first guy to say that's that right. They never I said going. I didn't like them. <gasps> that's right. Yeah. yeah. What's all the hype about? <laughs> Dave, think, Dave does not watch every episode. Let's make that Give clear. it up. Give it <laughs> Give up the concert talk. I was on that episode. Give it up? No, no way. Absolutely not. No, <laughs> I need to make more paddles. We need paddles yeah. for everything. Concert yeah. toms. Yeah. toms. Yes or no. Just yes or no. Just don't <laughs> have we us do, talk anymore. Can we do an episode on concert toms? I would we love should. to. Yeah, maybe you should. <laughs> I can host it. <laughs> <laughs> That's an idea. It's not a great idea. Uh, oh, this right. is cute. Sorry, William Schwant says, Slappy. I'm so happy for Slappy. <laughs> <laughs> it rhymes. We're also happy for Slappy. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, let's get to Groove of the Week. Uh, let's see the Groove of the Week, and then we're going to talk about it. Here is Groove of the Week, everybody. That's Wicked. a that's a classic hookabaga. Yeah. yeah, Thomas Lang. Hookabaga, hookabaga, hookabaga. Did you see his speed with the his right one hand? hand? Just, it's his all right hand was going. And he's like looking at the camera. like na 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 na. Do you mind showing that one more time? One more time, because it was a quick clip. The best part is he's like at a barbecue or something. I know. This is like blasting. This guy spends all his time practicing. One more time. One more time. And he even ends on the push. Too. They had a bar it's so extended. you can make a longer drum fill in there. <laughs> oh my god, and it it's so clean. Jeez. Yeah. So anyway, I just I had to. I'm glad we got that on there. So Thank that you. is Josh Cook, everybody. Oh, cool. You can find him on the Instagram at josh.cook.drums. Nice. And his band, as you saw in the clip, there is called Audio Melt. And it may be a little hard to hear in that clip because it is pretty drum heavy. 
Uh, that's actually Panama. <laughs> Yeah, it's yes. a Panama cover. It's it's, it's it's a Panama revisiting for sure. It's a There's way more double bass in that song. <laughs> and the, the right hand there, when he goes to the, to the stack, it's like, shh, 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 yeah. shh. It's like, it's just all like, it's all happening here. Really, so, really so great. So that looked like a fairly young band, correct? Yeah. I would say so. Do you think he has well, a higher skill level than his bandmates? Do you think that they're all pretty it's well too, aligned? It, you know, it's too hard to tell with that clip because it was only that one segment it's a hot that was clearly right drum featured. But they... Their vo vocal the vocals sounded, good. sounded really good. Their yeah. guitar sounded on. You know, I don't know, man. Like maybe they, I, I gotta follow them and and listen to them more. But uh, yeah, they're an up and comer. And if that band isn't an up and comer, that drummer sure is. Definitely. So, mm -hmm. I'll go and check them out. Go follow them. Give them some love. Say, hey, drum department sent me to your page, and and um, I'd love to see that guy uh, um, just get some more exposure because yeah. he's fantastic. Yeah. Nice. All right, it is time to celebrate our student of the week. Every week, we like to celebrate one of our Drumeo students. And this week, our student of the week is Starry. Let's see Starry play. I'm going to share a little bit after this clip. Check it out. Stuff, sorry. Uh, super was solid. Great. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say even the the break before she came back. It she came back in time. Yeah. She's a member. I'm curious. Did she come through Domino's class? She did. Ah, yeah, she so was. Cool. She was a 30 day drummer. Yes. Yeah. And awesome. uh, I wonder if she's gonna take 30 day shops. She might. Yeah. She could. It's a bit of a jump. Uh, so <laughs> I just want to share a little bit about Starry. So uh, Starry has been playing for a little while. Uh, she was offered an instrument in school, but she was offered to, to, to do guitar drum lessons, and so she clearly made the right choice. Mm. <laughs> uh, got herself yes. an electronic hit, uh, takes lessons at school, of course, and became a drum member, which is awesome. Lots of music at home. Dad's a guitar player, so they can probably jam then. Nice. Yeah. So that's awesome. Uh, she's a big fan of Estepario. Oh, oh, cool. Who yeah. is it? Yeah, who I was isn't? Say, who is it? He's so good. Yep. Mm -hmm. And some stuff she's working towards smells like Teen Spirit. She should check out your video, Dave, on five levels of how That's to play that song. She could totally yeah, play video. Smells Like Teen Spirit right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> she also is working towards Flight of the Icarus by uh, Iron Maiden. Wow. What That's, a, what a taste heavy. in music. Yeah. Love yeah. it. Starry, awesome. I love it. And congratulations. Yeah. I love the Student of the Week because. It's not every day that these, you know, drummers get that pat on the back that they need sometimes. You know, that's a lot. It's a lot of hard work to, first off, start the drums. Mm -hmm. Second off, film yourself and put mm -hmm. yourself out there. It's stressful. You know, our community is super supportive and we love encouraging beginners, um, young and old drummers. So, yeah, I love that. I love this section, man. Yeah. And on that note, Dave, I have to say, if you're curious as to how we have a student of the week, well, those are part of our membership, right? Inside Drumio, we have so many lessons. We have... 5,000 songs, fully transcribed with and without the drums. We have lessons from your favorite drummers. Doesn't matter who they are, we probably have them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if we don't, we're trying to get them, yes. trust me. Yes, um, and how would you know about all these things? Well, you can check it out. You don't even have to buy anything. You can just try our trial. You can go over to drumeo.com slash trial for a seven free, free seven day trial. Seven days free, Dave. Seven days for free. Mm -hmm. Do it. Do it. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that's how we get our students of the week. We have so many great students doing all kinds of great stuff. It's awesome. Ah, uh, all right. It's time for gear of the week, everybody. Nice. What do we have? So this, this week, week oh. everybody, this is really neat. So, you guys know we often seem to have things from our good friends at A and F. Uh, they like to send us cool things to show off because they make all kinds of neat things. This is one of them. Oh, that is. This cool. is their hoop-mounted clamp. With L arm, not a great name. Pretty straightforward. Hoop mounted clamp. Hoop mounted clamp. So it's to go on your hoop. Hoop Dylan. mounted clamp. There it is. Oh, we that don't, is we cool. Don't, we don't have licensing for that. We so. don't have licensing. <laughs> yes, exactly. Can't mod. All right. So everybody says, okay, yeah, I've seen this before. It's the kind of thing you would put a cowbell on. That sort of thing. I'll get right there for Jesus. We can get it. Yeah. So you got this portion here. Which is, you know, the simple, it's the business end of the whole thing. Mm. Now, this is like just the clamp itself. You can buy just this. It's about $75 or $80. Not cheap, but it's very well Whoa. made. This is solid steel. So this will actually hold any 
anything that's this diameter. So any L arm you have, mm. you may have a percussion setup or something like that where you want to add something right here in your kick. Yeah. This is certainly more flexible than a lot of the cowbell holders that I've seen, so this is really great. Now their L arm, which this one does include, and we're going to give away to one of our members shortly, has this really cool thing. So it's knurled, that's what this is here. Mm. It's good for gripping, so you can put a cowbell or I don't know, wood block down on the lower portion. But because they've also got that threaded for a, sorry, there we go. <laughs> it's also threaded here for a cymbal. You can do oh, that nice. too, which is super rad. And so they actually show this, it's really cool. They have it set up on some of their um, uh, videos where they have the, a splash kind of leaning over on the snare drum. I can't quite make that work here with the bass drum and the snare drum heights, but you could. If you had a long enough uh, bracket, you could totally mm -hmm. do it. And because you don't have to use just their brackets, it'll just, uh, you know, it just clips around in the bass drum here. But yeah, you can do all kinds of cool things. So there's my cowbell mount, which is great. I can go, and, and the problem with cowbell mounts often is you don't have the, uh, the directional mount ability this mm. way, that way. So you're usually stuck with it right there. So if you had a small cowbell, it might be too far in, mm. that kind of thing. But yeah, so we've got a stack here. It's not gonna come with the stack of the cowbell, I'm sorry. But uh, you could totally use this on here too because there's enough space to put both things. That is huh. super that's great. Which is great. Yeah, it's the smallest, simplest things. Hey, it that, truly is. That's actually brilliant. <laughs> yeah. It's actually yeah. brilliant. So yeah, so now... Chops for days. And that's yeah. what that mount sounds like. It sounds, it, Wait, it, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so that's $75 something. No, just that bracket is. Just the bracket. So how much is it for the entire, <clears throat> entire Dave, thing? Dave, I'm glad you asked. It's 148 <sighs> US dollars. <sighs> now that is not inexpensive. You can buy wow. basically something similar to that for probably half that, maybe less. But you won't get that cool functionality all in one piece. I can't even think of an example that would do a splash cymbal or a stack and a cowbell. Yeah, I don't think I've ever right? seen that. The only thing I wish it did that it does not do is that clamp only works on a bass drum. Hmm. If I could clamp that to this floor tom, oh, hmm. having that right there. Oh, here we go. <coughs> Pardon nice, me. Nice throttling. I, on I just started. Right? I just started using a stack at gigs, and that's where I would want to have it, but mm. I have it on a cymbal stand, so I can't get it. Mm. Yeah. There, yeah. that's interesting. It's great well, there. I, I like having it there too. US. Are you giving it away? I'm gonna give it away right Can now. I have it? Dylan, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> and <laughs> it goes to Dylan. <laughs> it's not, it, we don't rig it at all, everybody. Um, uh, Dylan, why don't you help me select a name? Uh, I need a letter of the alphabet. Uh, D. D for Dylan. I see where you're going with that. Oh, I already know how you're gonna okay. pick. No, you don't. Mm -hmm. It's going to go to... Do, 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 do. <laughs> Everyone's just typing D. <laughs> Too easy, guys. <laughs> and we're on enough of a delay. <laughs> okay, hang on here. It's going to go to... Even Freudian <laughs> Slip. Freudian Slip. Freudian oh, nice. Slip. Congratulations. Ooh, congrats. Yes, while you're working through your... Um, your psychology, whatever it is you're doing, <laughs> Freudian slip. Uh, email me at krad at drumyou.com. You're going to win that really cool uh, ANF hoop mounted bass drum clamp and L arm. I might just use it once this week first. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and then cool. Dylan will sign it for you. Yeah, right? <laughs> Could be what cool an for honor. 30 day chops, too. Yeah, that would be. All right, so. Yeah. Cowbell action? Yeah. To summarize this episode, which is riveting, by the way. We didn't maybe decide exactly what chops are, but I think we got a lot closer today, everybody, right? So We did some good work here. We did yeah. some good work here. Yeah. So I think we can safely say chops, it, 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 high level of execution seems to be pretty accurate across the board, yes? Yes. Okay. Uh, could be linear, could be single strokes, could be anything pr created that way, but currently those linear ideas, in case you're wondering what linear means, that's one note per body limb, if you will, at a time. That's the best way to explain it, I think. Because uh, it's very creative and interesting sound. It gives you lots of options very much in a row. Um, a chop can be used in a fill, for sure. Dave? I was going to disagree with that last Go ahead. <laughs> I don't think it has yeah, to be I don't think it, summarizing. I don't think it has to be linear. <laughs> so much for that. I mean, you just did 30-day chops two. and it wasn't linear. 
Yeah, it's true. Oh, I guess there was. I mean, the idea. I, I would argue the ideas are though. I mean, I think a lot of the coolest chops are linear. Here we go. <laughs> so, okay, we're done arguing. Yeah, we're summarizing. Back. Sorry, guys. Anyways, yeah. uh, chops are really cool. Check out chops. Thirty day chops. <laughs> yes. That's all I got. <laughs> That's all you got. Yeah. It is a cool. It is a cool course. I've seen it. I can't wait to get into it myself. Mm. I mean, Zach is such a creative dude. I, I mean, I have my little go tos, but I definitely need to expand my library. We and sh- the music behind it's amazing. So we yeah, should do an episode after Thirty Day Chops where we all bring a chop, and we have to let them decide. Oh, I like that. Whose show and tell. Chop they liked the best. Can it be like the show on the Cooking Network chop called and Chopped? Tell. Chops. Exactly. Yeah. You might have to change that name. I don't know if they'll let us get away with that. We'll just spell it. They might chop us. C H A U P P. Apostrophe. Chop. Oh, here we go. Chopped. William William Schwant wants a chop off. Chop off. Chop nice. off. Let's go. I once had a chop off with um, Eric Moore, and it was so intimidating. Did they give you a, a white flag? To <laughs> oh it? man, I Wait, definitely like, lost. Is there a video of this? But what was super cool about it is, like, he knew he was gonna whip me. You see me play, right? But it was such a positive experience. He's just like, yeah, like cheering me on. He's like, and then when I did something that was just outside my, like, I failed, but he's like cheering me on, like that kind of wow. That's vibe. Really cool. It was such a fun experience. Hmm. You know? I bet. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, terrifying, but also uh, inspiring, I'm totally. sure. Totally. Yeah. All right, it's time to give away a membership to Drumeo. And guess what? Included in that membership, you will also have access to 30 Day Chops. Ding! Uh, so we're going to give that away. Uh, I need a number between 1 and 10. Go ahead, Brandon, and pick one, please. 7. 7. Perfect. Johnny Robinson out there nice. in YouTube's, you oh, have won a one-year membership to Drumeo that will include the ability... Sorry, I got really high there for a second. That will include the 30 day chops if you want to get into that cohort and hang out with Zach Grooves for a whole month. Yeah. There's hey, even cool prizes in that too. Basically everything we do is included in a Drumio membership. Absolutely. That's a $240 value. So congrats Johnny. It is a $240. Johnny Robinson. Johnny Robinson. Congrats. Lance. Congratulations nice. Johnny Robinson. <sighs> Thanks guys. Thanks for entertaining the topic of chops. Thanks for going down the chop lane way with us today. All of those of you out there watching, thank you. Hope you learned something. If you didn't, hopefully you had a good time. Anyways, we'll be back again next week. Uh, we got something zany planned for next week. You're really going to enjoy it. Uh, for those of the, you in the members area, we're going to come right back and answer your questions. So stay tuned. Otherwise, we'll see you all again next week on the Drum Department. Bye. Peace. Bye.